Servus aus Berlin. Hi, my name is Matthias Willich. And today I'd like to talk to you about a software that you should probably get familiar with when you're starting with your PhD or if your PhD is already underway. So there is no question that there is a whole bunch of factors that determine the outcome and success of your PhD, your motivation, your situation, your um, advisor, your host lab and your topic and many other factors, but it's also clear that you should be familiar with um, a certain set of software and apps um, because you will use them in your everyday life and um, it also will make things a lot easier if you are quite familiar with these software packages. And there's, there's several that I think are important and this list is with a perspective towards PhD students in, in ecology and evolution and environmental sciences. So of course the number one recommendation is software for statistics and data analysis and of course um, R is indispensable. You need to be very familiar with R. Um, if you're not already, this is the best time investment you can make possibly. It is a huge advantage if you're very good with R um, because as soon as you have data you can analyze it yourself. Um, and you will be in demand by others if you're very good with data analysis and this way you can forge a lot of collaborations. So the importance of being very familiar with R and with um, a number of the main packages in R cannot possibly be overstated. I think it's absolutely essential for success um, in ecology and environmental sciences. The second set of software is of course Microsoft Office. Um, and among those, Word. Um, I mean, Word can be irritating <laughs> if you've ever tried to move a picture anywhere and see it decompose your um, text in front of your very eyes. But um, Microsoft Word is um, basically used by essentially everybody. So, I mean, you may use for yourself also another software, but um, I think in the end, Microsoft Office Word is the one software that is most interchangeable among uh, collaborators, for example. So you should be familiar with the basic workings of some of those Office programs, and that includes also PowerPoint or the equivalent um, open source software, um, or also, um, well, other packages really. But um, Office, PowerPoint, and Excel, sort of the basic building blocks of Microsoft Office, they are, they are a must. You should be familiar with the workings of those because you will need them all the time. In addition to that, I think it's quite useful to be familiar with the workings of those online collaboration tools. Um, nowadays, and since maybe a few years, I've written every paper I write myself in, in Google Docs. You can use Google Docs or you can um, use any other online collaboration tool, um, but become familiar with the workings of it because otherwise it just be, <laughs> it'll just be irritating um, um, when things change and you, and you don't know what's going on. So, I mean, Google Docs um, is something that I use every day, all the time, and for all papers I write collaboratively, and I like it. So, uh, find which one works for you, and then also become familiar with that software. Now, I wish I was familiar with a very good drawing program, but I would definitely recommend that you are. Um, Inkscape, for example, or um, some of the Adobe programs, people that can use those well or whatever other um, drawing program is out there, they have a real advantage because um, just the expectations for the quality of graphics are steadily increasing. This is definitely something we've seen in the last few years happening um, in, in grant applications, but also in papers, in proposals, in presentations. If, if you can produce um, some really impressive killer graphics, this, this really will help you a lot. There is, there's no doubt about it. So become familiar with the workings of um, a good graphics program. Now I'm almost ashamed to admit it, but I've only very recently, and I mean this year, <laughs> 2020 um, familiarized myself with a reference manager before I enjoyed kind of the zen of typing in references. 
um, by myself and becoming familiar with every comma and every period and other punctuation in these references. But this is really a terrible idea. So I think you um, pick one of the reference managers and um, stick with it, become familiar with it and just use it. I wish I had started this earlier. Um, I use Zotero. I mean, it works fine. Um, I use that particular one because it links with uh, Google Doc, but you can use pretty much any reference manager you like. Just remember that when you change institutions and your new one doesn't subscribe to it, you, you may encounter some problems. But um, Zotero, for example, is free, widely available. So it works okay with the occasional bug that I've um, seen, but um, just pick any one of those reference managers. You'll be better off than without, without a doubt. I would say become familiar with one of the social media programs. I mean, you don't have to do all of them, I think, unless you really like it. But I personally, I like Twitter. I've been on Twitter since 2015. I'm, I like it. It's a bit addictive, but it is also a very nice way to interface um, with your colleagues, to find out about new work that's going on, um, to forge new, new collaborations. I mean, this has definitely led to new collaborations. You get to know people. Um, and, and, and there is basically almost no hurdle. So it is very easy to get in, in touch with people also. Or oh, I kind of like your paper or every week I also tweet which paper we read in lab meetings and that often starts uh, conversations in a pretty effortless way. So I, I really like that about it. Um, but if you're into other softwares like Instagram or Facebook or um, I don't know if TikTok is a thing for science, but um, then um, go for it or YouTube. <laughs> um, but I think having one of them in your repertoire, um, I think will help you just because you get information out and you have a, um, a source of information as well. So I guess become familiar with one of the social media programs. And of course, on a more practical side, um, you will have many appointments, you will have deadlines, you will have reports, um, you will have to keep track of things in your experiment, you will have to time events. And so um, use a calendar. I use um, Google Calendar. Um, you can use any other calendar app as well, of course. Um, I like it because I can search it in the end. I can figure out when I did stuff or with whom I met on, on what day. And um, I get reminders, otherwise I would forget appointments. So I think um, a calendar is also a good app. So um, while this is not guaranteeing your success, I think um, being familiar with a bunch of these apps can, can really help you a long way, getting organized, getting information, getting things sorted out. And so I strongly recommend that you become familiar with these um, seven apps that I, that I mentioned. Hi there. If you like this video, don't forget to click like down there and also remember to subscribe to the channel and feel free to leave comments. See ya!